Uh, Alright guys, welcome back to Insane Break Gaming. Um, this is part one of a brand new playthrough. Um, I did play it for 10 minutes and then realised that my audio wasn't recording, so... Uh, it is a choice based game, I believe. Very story heavy. <coughs> um, so yeah, let me just check the... Uh, sound. There we go. Uh, so I've got sound coming out, so we're going to start a new game. So there's three chapters. Um, apparently. Yep. So. Okay, damn, it sounds a bit loud. So, yeah. Um, so it's a relatively short game. Um, it is a choice based game, I know that much. And I'm some kind of detective. Um, so, yeah, that's all I really know. But it is a remastered, so I never played the original, no clue. I know you can buy this on the PSN. I think you can buy it on, obviously, uh, Xbox, what I'm playing on now. Um, and probably, obviously, PC, let's be honest. So I'll be using this to break up other playthroughs and stuff like that, so... Yeah. The music sounds very... Epic, doesn't it? Like adventurous, like some evil doings is going on. It's like, what the hell? I'm breathless with anticipation. What? <laughs> okay, I look like some makeup stuff. <laughs> the Raven's heir. <laughs> Soon as one of them's caught, another one takes his place. Hey, Harold, have you read this? Harold? 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 You hear me? This is no time for fun and games. Oh shit. Might have taken out the other guard. Shh! Calm down. No, a copper. We're on the same side. A copper? What are you doing here? And where's Harold? Harold? Well, there's another guard back there unconscious. That's probably him. The Eye of the Sphinx. Where is it? It's there. Oh, good. Then he hasn't got it yet. You mean... The Raven's heir? Shh! Turn it off. He's gonna steal the Eye. But... How do you know? Doesn't matter. All that matters is that we catch him. Do you understand? Yeah, but do you understand? You and me, mate, we'll be heroes. All right, now so we just the have Sphinx to. Sign or whatever. What? Oh shit! Hold! Just like that, it's gone. I love how you said copper. They're in Britain. Oh shit! Looks creepy as hell, doesn't it? A Raven remastered. I've never heard of this game. Wow, that got bright. Oh wow, loving the the art, the backdrop. That's pretty cool. I think this is a steam train, but I don't know what time period they're in. I'm not very good with uh, time periods or whatever, or accents. There's a lot of things like that. I'm not just I'm just not good at, so I couldn't tell you. But I'm loving the uh, the backdrop. The art looks really good. Almost tries to give you a theme of like back to the simpler times in, in in the world, you know, steam trains, less pollution, you know. <laughs> Guys, while this is going on, I'm just gonna check my audio to see if my uh, voice is being recorded properly.
So it seems to be working well right now, so hopefully may long that continue. Hands up! I don't Get away from me, you ginger brick. Play. I'm on duty. You don't look like a real cop. You don't even have a revolver. Oh, so here we go. Um, so this is... Who is he? Toy gun. You should go away. Why do you need the gun? It's the Raven. He was gunned down, so now I need a pistol. Dead birds don't need guns. Nor do live ones. You don't know who the Raven is, do you? He's the greatest burglar ever. He stole paintings from the Louvre. And those priceless eggs with gold and diamonds and stuff. And Bobby Dobbs says he replaced the crown jewels with rhinestones. I know who the Raven was. Although, I don't quite buy that bit about the crown jewels. Burglary in London? Oh yeah, okay, so that must be, okay. You do know these days there are thieves far more dangerous than your old Raven. Two days ago, a precious ruby was stolen from the British Museum. There was an explosion. A guard was severely injured. Really? Yeah. And you know what the papers say? <clears throat> you talk too much, Constable. Zellner, monsieur. Anton Jakob Zellner. Or did he pull a gun on you? No, monsieur. Get a move on. Okay, so he sounds French. This is a French character? Legrand. It's a great honor to work with a celebrity like you. We appreciate the support of the Swiss police. Oh, I'm Swiss. I thought I was French. Be if you'd remain seated and keep an eye on things. I would like to help. What's going on here? Uh... But, monsieur, your journey on this train is most unusual. Is it related to the burglary at the British Museum? Not in the least. And the safe? What's that for? I'll let you know if we need your help, Constable. If you'll excuse me, I'll be in the first freight car at the back of the train for the rest of the trip. I'm not here to enjoy the beautiful scenery. I... I am a good observer, and I have finely honed powers of deduction. Thanks to that? I watched the people on the platform in Zurich. I know, for example, that that man over there is a violinist. <laughs> that would be more impressive if there weren't a violin case next to him. And <laughs> I believe that the gentleman in the next carriage is a German doctor on his way to Italy to take up a new position. <laughs> and what gives you that idea? There's the rod of Asclepius engraved on his cufflink. And he's carrying a German-Italian dictionary. Maybe he's just taking a holiday in Italy, following in Goethe's footsteps. Too much luggage. And no, he's not retiring to Italy either. The suitcases are too shabby for me to believe that he can afford to retire in his late fifties. All right then, Constable... Zellner. Constable Zellner. If you're such a clever fellow, what am I doing on this train? Um... Well, I won't lie, um, this is kind of weird. So he's Swiss, um, and he, so it seems to be that I'm, he doesn't want my help. He's a bit stuck up that way, I think. Um, but he is guarding a safe. He's only on holiday, he's searching for someone. No, he ain't on holiday, definitely, so. He's guarding something, so I'm gonna say guarding. He's guarding that safe. That's what his purpose is, I think. I think you're guarding something. Oh, really? And what might it be? A jewel? Well, well, it's inside the safe. Well, we could go dual because that one was stolen, so maybe they've moved another one. Could it possibly be a jewel that's making a long and perilous journey? You're guessing. You can't possibly know what's inside the safe. But if that were the case, then I'd ask you why the train wasn't crawling with police. Uh, don't arouse tension. A trap. More men are unnecessary. Uh, possibly that. It could be that though. They don't want too many people knowing what's going on, like a big operation. I want to go a trap. It's, I don't know. It's a trap. <laughs> You've got a vivid imagination. I'll give you that. Well, 
That is impressive, I admit. But the fewer people involved, the better. We'll get along. I see. So that was more or less the answer. You won't. Won't? Pardonnez-moi. I can help. And I will help. You are in my country. And I have been ordered to assist you. And that's exactly what I'll do. Whether you like it or not. Hmm. Clever and stubborn. Your commitment speaks volumes, Zelna. But this is my show, and I don't need you. Bon voyage. But how do you know? Damn, he's kind of um, persistent, my character, ain't he? Oh, hello. You cheated. I did what? I saw you talking to the German doctor on the platform. He told you everything himself. You were just pretending to put two and two together. Oh, shit. Now, what of it? Do you know who that is? That's Inspector Nicholas Legrand. You have to impress him if you want to work with him. I'm going to tell on you. You'd really tell on me? To the very policeman who shot your dear Raven? Whoa. It was him? Mm-hmm. Hunted and killed Europe's most famous burglar. That's how he got his start. I won't tell him a thing. I wouldn't either. What's your name again? Matthew Miller from Dillsburg, Pennsylvania. All right, from Matthew America. Miller from Dillsburg, Pennsylvania. I have to do my work now. Everyone calls me Matt. Well, except for my mom. She calls me Maddie, as if I were a little kid. You are a little kid. Whether Legrand wants my help or not, I'll keep my eyes open. Maybe I can change his mind. A little piece of shit was gonna grasp on me, a little fucker, a little ginger prick. Alright, uh, do you want to learn about the game's controls? Uh, yes, tell me more, okay. Um, to examine the item next to it, there's a left stick, use the right stick to select, press A, select the sandwich paper on the table. Okay, A, examine the sandwich. I thought I wouldn't be hungry because of all the excitement. Thankfully, I bought a sandwich with me anyway. Don't they have a car or something that goes around on these trains? Um, take the sandwich paper. Uh, very good. Now press Y. This opens the inventory. You can see all the items and constables. Constable Zelly is okay, carrying blah blah blah. Okay, paper napkin. Sandwich paper. Wrap it in that. Yeah. All right. So Y and A are my main buttons right now. Uh, open the inventory to set papers. I wrap the apple core in the sandwich paper. That way I can carry it without making a mess of my trouser pocket. Still, I prefer not to have to carry them all day. Okay. Of course, you can also. Use items inside the inventory which selected paper napkin A and then select the paper. Okay. Sandwich, paper, and we have apple core. Okay, selected. Combine the napkin inside. came with the croissant I bought at the train station. A guilty pleasure. I don't need that either. Okay, so we're wrapping it all up. My god. Annoying these controls, I won't lie. Uh, let's get rid of it. Dump the litter from the inventory into the ashtray on Zelin's table. Okay. Every table has its own waste basket. Practical. No need to ever leave your seat. Okay, waste basket, they said ashtray. Every table has its own waste basket. Practical. No need to ever leave your seat. That is the dumbest thing on the planet. Waste basket or ashtray? You kidding me? There's a fucking difference. That was that wasn't right. too hard, was it? Oh shit! What? Highlight all objects in the scene. Okay, X is to highlight areas. All right. A loading screen for that? Come on. Alright. Out the window, examine a book. 
The Vicarage in the Mirror, a detective novel by my favorite author, Lady Clarissa Westmacott. For years now, I've been trying to convince my theater group to stage one of her plays. Surprised they didn't fucking do it. He's a part of a theater group. I will say the art backdrop is really nice. The music's decent. The models look clay-like, don't they? You notice that? Interesting choice of art style. Observe the uh, uh, violinist. The violinist is a good-looking fellow. And he's traveling through the most beautiful mountain landscape in the world. But one can only hope that his violin is better tuned than he. Talk to the violinist. Here we go. Hello, sir. Hello. Who is he? Was he traveling to? I'm not okay. mistaken. You're a violinist. That's true. A wonderful instrument. The violin music touches the soul. That's why I learned to play it. Do you play in an orchestra? No, orchestras aren't really part of my world. A solo violinist. The best soloists travel a great deal and make a pile of money, or so they say. In that case, I'm probably not one of the best. Was he traveling to? Are you traveling to Istanbul non-stop? No. I'll transfer in Venice to a ship. I'm on my way to Cairo. Cairo? I'm performing at the reception in the Egyptian Museum there. Ah, Egyptian Museum. Unusual I'm cars. sure your recital will be a great success. But tell me, did you notice anything unusual on the train? Anything unusual? Persons acting suspiciously, for instance. For heaven's sake, is there cause for concern? Everything is in order, sir. We Swiss are just very cautious people. I understand. No, I didn't notice anything. Have a good trip. Mm. Thank you. So, general investigation work there. We found out a little bit about him. Very kind of you. Thanks. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Oh, pardon me. No, no, no problem. The uniform is waterproof. Uh, Mr. Lucio. Professor Edgar Lucio. Oh, a professor. Are you a scientist? Do you teach at the Sorbonne? No, I work at the British Museum in London. You don't say. Burglar at the museum, destination of his trip. So, yeah. you were, uh, shall we say, an eyewitness to the burglary two days ago. No, I wouldn't say that. Oh, no? Well, there was a lot of commotion, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. There was a break-in in your museum, and it didn't concern you? Well, let's just say that nothing that's happened in the last 2,000 years concerns me. <laughs> okay. Oh, I suppose he does, uh, like... Dinosaurs or digging or something? I mean, 2,000 years. He's not interested in today's world kind of thing. Um, destination of his trip. Inspector Legrand. Um, Whatever you say. The famous Inspector Legrand is on this train. I imagine you know him. Uh, no. Should I? You don't know him? And you also don't know what he's doing here? No. <laughs> Why should I? Just a thought. You're a representative of the British Museum. There's a guarded safe on the train. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're trying to imply. And now, please excuse me. Okay, he wants to go. Uh, this is the destination of his trip. May I ask where you are going? Of course. To Venice. I'm going to meet some colleagues there. Oh, Venice. A beautiful city. Or so I'm told. Indeed. But I really have to take my leave now. Okay. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Here? On the train? No. I can't say that I have. Although I did spend most of the time in my compartment. I don't want to take up any more of your valuable time. But you do understand, don't you, that what concerns me is the present. And especially the robbery at the museum. Yeah, of course, of course. It's just... I I'm in rather a hurry. You'll get in touch if you notice anything unusual, won't you, Professor? Of course, Constable. What's this? 
What's the matter, sir? The door. I can't open it. Ah. We'll sort it out somehow. The compartment is locked. But I didn't lock it. I don't even have a key. I asked the steward. He was going to bring me one, but he never came back. Someone locked it. Find the steward. He needs to bring me the key immediately. Calm down, Professor. I'll see what I can do. You don't yeah, calm down. Fucking hell. I have to get back in my compartment. All right. Just wait here. Jesus, I wonder why. Okay, so he seems. Why is he so concerned? Sorry, I pause it here. Why is he so? Con why am I? Cause my character is so concerned with the fact that um, the British Museum breaking. Like, it has nothing to do with us, really. Then again, I think the whole plot might be to do with the museum. I don't know. I mean, if there's a jewel in that box, um, that could be another jewel that are guarding. I don't know. So maybe. It's all part of the same thing, I don't know. Um, examine a lock. You can easily lock the compartment door from inside by turning a little knob. But I didn't lock it. Professor, if you had locked the door from in there, you wouldn't be out here. Uh, that's true. Right, try to open lock. I don't believe that... <laughs> It's no use. The bolt is too short to get a good grip on it. Right. Examine the locked door. Perhaps uh -huh. a thoughtful conductor noticed that Professor Lucien wasn't in his compartment and locked it. He doesn't make a very balanced impression. And he, of all people, isn't bothered by a robbery in his own museum. So we've got to find someone to open it. What's this? Another door? The little label on the door reads Baroness von Trevitz. Blue blood on the Orient Express. Knock on the Baroness's compartment door. Alright. Yes, what is it? Whoever that is, James, ask them whether they found my purse and then closed the door. The noise on this train is driving me crazy. Lost purse. You're missing a purse. Was it stolen? At the very least, I cannot find it, sir. It was stolen. When did you... When was the last time the Baroness saw her purse? What? In Zurich, on the platform, sir. I just asked where you last saw your purse. In Zurich on the platform. James, tell him that I still had it when I got out to stretch my legs. The Baroness says... Maybe you lost it there. What? The Baroness never loses anything, sir. I never lose anything. <laughs> Very well, then. I shall be on the lookout for your purse. All right, I'm a if I might ask you a few questions about your fellow passengers. I thought he was looking for my purse. James, tell him to look for my purse. The Baroness wishes that you search for her purse. Yes, 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 we'll Could get we to that. Perhaps... <sighs> All right, first the purse. I... <sighs> I will have a look around. Thank you, sir. God, what a bitch. She just gives a shit about her purse. Didn't want to talk. <laughs> Alright, uh, so we've got to find her purse. And we've got to try and get this dude's into the saloon car. So we've got to try and get him in the uh, in his room. But he said that there was somebody else, another guy, so maybe we've got to try and find that character. I don't believe it. I never thought I'd ever meet you. Uh, pardon me, but uh, we'd prefer... It's all right, Miss Miller. I'd like to speak to the inspector. Unfortunately, just a constable, Lady Westmacott. I'm reading The Vicarage in the Mirror right now, for the fifth time at least. That's nice, Constable... Uh, Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. This is my companion, Miss Miller. So he's, she's the author? His favourite author. Uh, what's she doing here? Fellow passengers missing purse. Okay. May I ask what you're doing here? 
Are you on holiday? Holiday? Yes, so to speak. The first and last holiday of my life. Madam? I've been writing since I was... First and last? It became my job, and now I've stopped. So, this must be a holiday. You quit writing? Impossible. I have all of your books. Your detective Patu is my favorite character. Then I have bad news for you. I killed the old wretch off years ago. I... I don't understand. I'd rather not discuss my work, Constable. Oh, well, fine. Okay, where is she traveling to? Are you traveling to Istanbul, Lady Westmacott? No, we are on our way to Venice. From there we will take a ship to Cairo. As you may okay. know, I have a penchant for archaeology. I fund a few excavations in Egypt. I travel to Egypt ah. by ship as a young woman. And now I'm doing it again as an old woman. I see. So it appears everybody in this on this I'll say ship, everyone on this train has some kind of link to Venice or the Cairo. We got her who's funding exhibitions, she's a very rich lady. We got the professor who's an archaeologist, uh, and we've got the violinist. So that's three people, all three characters. I don't know what the boy's doing here. Um, don't know where he's going, but yeah. Uh, fellow passengers, missing purse. There's something else. A passenger's purse has gone missing. I suppose you haven't seen it. I'm sorry, Constable Zellner. As you know, I only deal with murder, not burglary. <laughs> Have you asked my boy yet? Maddie is good at finding things. Oh, it's her son. That now. As a fellow passenger, must be very observant. Am I right? I mean, you have to study the behavior of people around you to create the characters in your novels, don't you? I solved the mystery of human nature a long time ago, Mr. Zellner. Since then, most people just bore me. Really? <laughs> I had the impression you were eyeing me suspiciously as I came in. What do you want to know, Constable? Archaeologist or violinist? Ah, uh, ooh. So, what's her impression of these people? Did you notice the blonde man with the violin case? <laughs> I certainly did. He introduced himself and tried to make a good impression. People like him are drawn to wealth and fame, like moths to a flame. But his charms failed on you. I know him by name. David Kreutzer. He was a drain on my friend's purse. Do you think he has a money problem? People like him always have a money problem. No matter how much you give them, they always spend twice as much and complain that they have far too little. Oh. So he, he was a drain on a friend's purse. So he was like a leech, I suppose. Did you notice the man who just walked into the next carriage with a cup of tea? I did. He seemed nervous. He was waiting at the bar for the steward, and since the steward never appeared, he elected to help himself. He took two biscuits. He seems pretty young, but he's already a professor at the British Museum. Interesting. I'll have to talk to him later. Just out of courtesy, of course. Of course. So, do you notice how she put the emphasis on two biscuits? <laughs> like, um... Like, there's two people in there, whatever, like, you gotta have a biscuit each or some shit. I, I don't know, maybe that's just me. Um, Did you notice anyone else? What about the doctor or the baroness? I notice that you've asked me about everyone, except for the inspector who went in the direction of the freight car a few minutes ago. Isn't that the Frenchman who made his name when he caught the raven? I wouldn't quite say caught. Well, shot. Why don't you ask me about him and my theory about what he's doing here? I don't think we should discuss Inspector Legrand's investigation in public. Legrand, right. That was his name. Will he save the day again? Or will you, Constable? As much as I like to keep talking, duty calls. You were right. Madam? I did observe you as you came in. You seemed so... Uh, eager. I... It's been a long time since I've had a chance to prove myself, madam. And this is it. Your chance. I do hope so. Then grab it. Even small people can make big changes, as my friend Ronald likes to say. I shall do my best. 
Okay, so... Oh, man, we can speak to... Hold on, hold on, there's a lot of shit here. What's this? The steward toothpicks. must have forgotten the toothpicks. Normally, he would offer them discreetly after dinner. Take a toothpick. Agreed. Take them one. Um, we can speak to this Mrs. Woman Miller made a now. good impression. She wanted to protect Lady Westmacott from me, a pushy admirer. Very diligent. But she does seem a little nervous and tense. I imagine she has her work cut out for her with Matt. And a difficult bus, from what they say. Talk to Miss Miller. Uh, Mrs. Miller? Yes? Matt, the boy. The little Don't boy, Matt. He's your son? Oh, yes. <gasps> Has he done something? No, no. I've already met him. Clever little fellow. We always call him Professor because he's so precocious. If only someone could just drive the mischief out of him. Anything. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Oh, I'm afraid not. I was totally focused on my work. She's always got an awful lot to do, my Mary. You have to tell me if that's not all right with you. Good Lord, child. Knit as much as you want. So, nothing out of the ordinary? No, Constable. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, Constable. All right, so let's go to the next train. We've got to speak to the boy about his... About the purse, he might know something, but we'll get to that in a bit. Okay. Examine the bowl. Mmm, butterscotch. I've loved them since I was a child. Their only drawback, they don't play nice with false teeth. Take some mm. sweets. Maybe if I just suck it. <laughs> so, taking some toothpicks. And, um, bar scotch. Look behind the bar. Uh, I might talk to the doctor first. There's a lot of dialogue in this, and I'm not saying an awful lot because uh, a lot of Mr. story. Zelda. <laughs> right, right. How can I help you? Uh, anything suspicious? Robbery in London. Conductor. Well, let's ask about the conductor. The Baroness does. is missing her purse. A Baroness? This train is really full of the creme de la creme. The Queen or crime is over there. And now a Baroness as well. Have you seen the purse? Unfortunately, no. Do you know Lady Westmacott? You were talking to her. Well, I'm an admirer of her work. Like so many others. I once read in the newspaper that only Shakespeare and the Bible sell more copies than her crime novels. I read that. Damn. She must be filthy rich. As a doctor, I'd have to work a thousand years to earn that kind of money. Um, okay, so he's on about he's admiring the fact that she's rich. Um, robbery in London, anything suspicious, conductor. What would he think about the robbery in London? Any news about the robbery in London? Quite something, wasn't it? It must have been professionals. The way they disabled one of the best security systems in the world. Most impressive. People were injured. Well, one cannot execute a robbery of that scale without uh, you know, collateral damage. It seems like the Raven wow. has finally found a worthy successor. We can look forward to new and spectacular coups. I'm afraid I won't enjoy his exploits this time around if the new Raven is so reckless. That's your prerogative. Wow. So this doctor for a doctor actually admires the Raven even though people are hurt. Whatever. People can admire whoever they want. Um, but yeah, and he seems to be acknowledging the fact that the woman is the right is super rich and he's like envious of that shit plus he admires the thief mm. uh anything suspicious the conductor tell me did you notice anything suspicious here on the train or in zurich you mean except for the fact that my suitcase was stolen on the platform no is there any reason to be concerned no just routine so his bag was stolen? Please don't think I'm naive. I spotted the inspector from Interpol. Legarde is his name, if I recall correctly. Le Grand. If you say so. At the train station in Zurich, he put a cash box into the safe. 
and then kept close watch as it was loaded onto the train. Don't tell me that a man at his pay grade routinely tramps across the Alps just to keep an eye on cash boxes. A cash box? Like the ones you'd find in safe deposit boxes? Precisely. And I believe we both have a good idea just what's inside. So, even he's aware of the cash box. I do indeed have a theory, but what's yours? A ruby was stolen in London. One of the legendary Eyes of the Sphinx. The second jewel, an emerald, is rumored to be in a Swiss bank vault, if I remember correctly. Both jewels were supposed to be exhibited together in Cairo for the first ah. 50 years. It does make one wonder. Indeed. So he might be going to Venice and Cairo as well. Okay. Your newspaper caught my eye. May I borrow it for a second? You can take the section with the article on the burglary. You're interested in that bit, aren't you? <laughs> you caught me out. Here you go. Danke schön. Uh, conductor. Else. Do you know where the conductor is? Hmm. I'd like to know that myself. I told him to search for my missing suitcase in Zurich. He hasn't got back to me yet. He's probably in cahoots with the thieves and didn't bother getting back on the train. If we don't crack down on vermin like them, the rabble will rule the world one day. Well, at the moment, we still don't know what really happened. He is not here doing his job. That's bad enough. Auf Wiedersehen, Dr. Gebhardt. Goodbye, Constable. It was a pleasant chat, really. So lots of information there. Um, let me have a look at my inventory. I got a toothpick, butterscotch, and read the newspaper. So. about that let's see if there's any news blah 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 eye of the sphinx one of two priceless jewels extraordinary pure ruby 2000 bc etc etc old news and here Shocking burglary. Professional thieves surprised by museum guard Charles Langley and Constable Robert Oliver of Scotland Yard. Explosion? Not really anything new. One of the two eyes of the Sphinx, a ruby that's nearly 4,000 years old, was stolen from the British Museum. The burglar was surprised, but managed to escape with his loot without being recognized. That's the official story. But it says nothing about Legrand and the second eye. Hmm. Look at announcement. Okay, well, Lunas that drops. The calming herbal liqueur. A glad. Oh, I don't care about that stuff. Mm. A story. And, then and because the most. Just make mm. too long. There, well, that's it. So the London thing is the only thing I want to know about. Man, it's a bit like I said, guys, a lot of dialogue, not a lot of commentary for me because I've got to listen to the story myself. So, yeah, interesting stuff, huh? Um, we've got to the next cart. Go into the saloon car, we'll just come from there. Examine the ladder. The ladder leads up to the roof. It will be suicidal to climb up there while the train is at full speed. The wind, the tunnels. No, I'll stay down here. Go into the freight I car. I strongly suspect that the door is locked. No. We have to find a key. It's open. Oh, okay. Creepy back here. Wow. Don't move a muscle, you feathered fiend. Put the gun down, Robert. If He's I the same police the officer. As, constable as one in the museum, Robert I think. Oliver from the yard. And this is the revered Constable Zellner of the Swiss police, who obviously couldn't control his curiosity. 
Uh, trap, personal investigation, constable. Okay, well, there's a trap that we're going to set, right? Was right. You really do want to lure someone into a trap. That's none of your business. Perhaps that's someone recently struck in London. And how would I bait my trap then? With an eye? An eye on its way from Zurich to Cairo? <laughs> someone has done his homework. Well done, Constable. So we were right. It is the other thing. I got, uh, personal investigation, the Raven's heir. What do you know of this Raven's heir? He tried to blow me up. Robert, we don't know who we're dealing with yet. In any event, the new Raven is a more dangerous man than the old one. How do you know it's a man? It could just as easily be a woman. Or several men. And anyway, how do you know that it's a new Raven? Monsieur? Never mind. Wow, the other one got shot apparently. I assume they had a body, but I don't know. Uh, Constable Robert... Constable Oliver. Robert Oliver. Is it possible that I read your name in the newspaper? Uh, could be, sir. Could very well be. Robert was there when the first Eye of the Sphinx was stolen. Why were you in the museum? Did you spot something from outside? Well, sir, I noticed that a door was ajar, which was suspicious. And it was my duty to investigate, sir. Scotland Yard gave him a commendation and assigned him to me as a liaison. A great honor, sir. Personal investigation. I will acknowledge that I, as a Swiss policeman, can undertake investigations in my own country. Are we still in Switzerland? I could be your eyes on the train, as long as you're here in the freight car. Oh, really? Archaeologist there compartment. There is a certain Professor Lucien on the train. He's an archaeologist from London. And what's his story? Well, it seems someone locked him out of his compartment. Locked him out? Well, yes. The door is locked and he's standing outside without a key. Was it locked from inside? It may have been. Hmm. Do you think the locked door could be important? Professor Lucien plays an important role in this story. Well then, Constable Zellner. Be my eyes and ears on the train, and see that Professor Lucien gets back into his compartment. Report back to me when you're through. My pleasure, Monsieur. In Baron and the past. Interesting. Indeed, sir. But it has nothing to do with our case. So, I shouldn't concern myself with the matter? Ah, uh, why not? It's your job as a policeman. But don't expect me to be particularly interested in a lost purse. I go attend to the door now. Good. And Constable Zellner. Yes? Don't bother us unless you have something new to report. Of course. A thief might get anxious if there's too much activity in the freight car. Exact amount. Knock twice. Then we'll know that it's you. Understood. What a dick he ain't interested in the purse. <laughs> All right, makes sense. All right, whatever. Let's move on. An investigation on behalf of the Grand that takes me one step closer. If I can convince him of my competence, I might even be able to see this case through to the end. Okay. Go into the saloon car. So we're gonna get the um guy's door open but we ain't found the dude um no we could go back here couldn't we yeah hold on we might find a key behind the bar maybe or something I suppose the steward won't object to me having a look around in his absence uh examine the notepad Right, pad that. in which the steward writes orders. Empty. Maybe he didn't use it because there's not much to do today. Okay. Take notepad. Okay. Take the pad, but the pencil might come in handy. Okay. Hmm. Draw. Examine radio. A shortwave radio. It's amazing how small these things have become in the last ten years. Turn it on. Yeah. 
Okay. Let's look at the drawer. Perhaps he keeps the compartment keys in there. Locked. Oh, the lock shit. is so cheap that I could easily pick it. If I want to impress Legrand, I should probably just do it. He's famous for his unconventional methods. Open the drawer. I need oh, a got bit anything of while for it. or something like that to pick the lock. I need a uh -huh. bit of while. So we need a piece need of wire. Damn it. That's it. Ah. So we can speak to the boy. I think. I think we'll speak to the boy. This is the first car. The coal tender should be directly beyond this door, and in front of it, the engine. Uh, where's the boy? I think I need to charge this my joypad. Place. Crazy about trains. We don't just have a lot of railroads. We have the most beautiful ones in the world. <sighs> Very unusual. so kind as to close the window. I don't want to sit in the draft. Oh, pardon me. Okay, he didn't want the window open. Uh... Hmm. Speak to him again. The bolt is too short to get a good grip on it. I'm at a loss without a key or a proper tool. Try to open it. We've got some stuff here. Toothpick, pencil. No. That's no good. The wooden toothpicks are packed into small paper wrappers. Nothing unusual. Trying to open. short to get a good grip on. Oh, okay. I'm at a loss without a key. The boy. I'm at a loss. <sighs> I'll talk to him again. Professor Lucien. Yes. Do you have the key? Actually, I want it. Please. I have to go back to my compartment. All right. So he's being a total dick. Um. Where's the boy go? That's what I want to know. Maybe we ask his mum again. We need a piece of wire as well, so I don't know where to get the wire. I think it's uncomfortable for her when I talk to her in front of Lady Westmacott. She seems to take it as an inappropriate distraction from her work, although she's just knitting. Taking up a craft like that is typical of women who were told as little girls that idleness is a sin. I think it's un- Although- Oh wow, I can't speak to her. Where's the boy? I can't even find him now. I don't know what to do. I've spoken to everybody. Examine box. A box with a padlock. I suppose it contains tools for the train's crew, maybe for coupling and uncoupling the cars. At any rate, it's positioned so that it's easier to reach from the ground than from up here. Open box, here we go. 
locked. Hey. Uh. <gasps> Don't move. Matt, have you gone? This is a fucking boy. Hey, my pistol. Ma You'll get it back in Venice. I could have fallen under the wheels. I thought you were a ghost. Ghosts don't exist. They do too. One just flew past the window. Yes, yes, sure. Now get moving. Oh, man. Matty, you ginger bastard. Okay, so now go into the sling cost. Now we can speak to the boy. Think about the purse or whatever, I don't know. I've got to check the time of the video as well. Uh, where's the fucker gone? I bet he's gone all the way back to the... Oh, a constable? Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, my son didn't make any trouble for you, I hope. It's just that he just walked past us, silent and seething. That's usually a sign that someone's laid down the law. I'm afraid so. He played a trick on me, a rather dangerous one. The lad left me no choice but to take away his wooden pistol as a punishment. I understand. And thank you. Maddie is a very lively child. Sometimes he needs a strong fatherly hand. Where is Matt's father, if I may ask? He's... he's gone. Ah, I understand. Could you, uh, leave Maddie's pistol you cheated here? on her. <laughs> so you don't have to bother with it? Of course. I told him he wouldn't get it back until Venice. Very well. Thank you again, Constable. Alright, so we've got to speak to the boy. Ah. An extra... Yet. Fuck off. There we are. Ah. <sighs> She's probably not very adventurous in bed, and that's why her husband left her. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> this prick's still waiting outside his thing. I haven't got it yet, so I'm not going to speak to him. Right. Talk to Matt. Matt's going to be kind of pissy, I think. Hello, Matt. Oh, come on. Are you going to be angry with me for the rest of the trip? Until I get my pistol back. I gave it to your mother. Oh man, couldn't you have just raked me over the coals? Would you have learned anything <laughs> from that? I didn't learn anything from this either. Damn, so Matt's still pissed. Come on, Matt. Did you really think that you can ignore me for longer than I can ignore you? I'm Swiss. It's practically a national sport. <laughs> Examine Matt. Matt is digging in his heels. I won't get anything out of him as long as he's angry with me. Matt is digging in. I won't get anything out of. Uh, what if I offered him something? I'll offer him the candy. Can I do that? Yeah, here I'll give Matt butterscotch. Cool. Would you like a butterscotch? You think you can bribe me? I have no reason to. You made <laughs> trouble and got punished for it. Take it as a peace offering. Just four? If I'm faster than you, there'll only be three. Hey. Yeah. Friends again? Mm hmm All right then. And no dangerous nonsense anymore. Okay. Alright, so now we can ask him about a few things. So, the woman, the boy's plans, plans, what the fuck, missing purse, steward. Tell right, what about me, steward? have you seen the steward anywhere? Hmm, no. He was walking around a little while ago, though. Hopefully they didn't forget him in Zurich. <laughs> What's he supposed to do? I'm looking for a key to open a compartment door. Did you check his things behind the counter? I'm sure the drawers will be locked. Can't you break it open? Or pick the lock like the raven. Perhaps. But I'd need a piece of wire or something like that. Ask my mom. She has a lot of hairpins. She doesn't like the wind messing up her hair. Mmm. Ah, okay. For the tip. Nice. Thank you. Your mother is Lady Westmacott's companion, correct? Yeah, but it's not like you think. At first I thought, boy, you must be really wicked if you need to pay for friends. But the lady's really okay. <laughs> Odd and really old. 
But other than that, she's great. She likes me. The lady has peculiar taste. Hey! <laughs> okay, where does he live? Well, I don't really need to know that as such, but... The Baroness in the second compartment over there is missing her purse. Do you have any idea where it could be? <laughs> Do I ever? Mm -hmm. Oh good, where is it? That guy over there with the violin case? What about him? He picked up something in Zurich and put it in his violin case. Really? Ah. Yeah, and he made sure that nobody saw him. But you saw him? Uh-huh. Did you also see what it was? Nah, not really. But now that I think of it, it must have been the Baroness's purse. I should look into it, shouldn't I? I think so. Okay, that's just speculation now. We don't know, but it's, the purse is in there. Though, so that's a bit much, but, you know. Um, well, I'll just go through these anyway, guys. You and your mom, you both live on Lady West McCart's estate? I'm only there for the holidays. Most of the time I'm at boarding school. I imagine that's not very pleasant. No, it's fine. I have friends there. You always have to be so quiet in the lady's house. And I'm not allowed to bring any friends. Such a big house with so many places to hide. And no one to play hide and seek with. You said it. And how it's long fun. has your mother worked for the lady? Two years. And your father? What does he do? He stayed home. I used to go fishing with him. And hunting. He even let me shoot a real gun. And then? Then mom fought with him. And he left. I was seven. So yeah, but dad did uh, did leave. Ooh, I don't know the details of that particular story. The boy's plans. Oh. And uh, how old are you now? In eight months, I'll be nine years old. And do you already know no, what you're going to be when you grow up? A burglar? <laughs> No. We'll see. Maybe an actor. Really? Well, I don't know. You need a lot of talent for that. I'm an actor in a theater group, you know? You are? Oh, yes. And I'm one of the best in our group, if I may say so. I get really deep into my roles, you know? I don't just talk like the character. I think like him. I become him. It's the only way to... <coughs> Matt, are you okay? <coughs> He's got the corona. It's over. <laughs> I think you just have to be good at copying things to be an actor. That... That wasn't bad. Disturbing, but not bad. So long. So longer. Alright, so the violin... Um, dude supposedly has something in his violin case but that's unconfirmed we can't really go around accusing people like that uh, but the boy does say he has something there so that's kind of interesting uh, also we have to get the wire from his mother to check out the the um, cupboard uh, the steward and then we can let that guy in his room as well so that'd be kind of interesting guys I'm gonna check the time of this video but at the same time I'll say this this is story heavy narrative like it's, it's like dialogue so there's not a lot of commentary coming from me so i hope you find the, the story interesting it is a shorter playthrough so please bear that in mind so it's not going to be like a 20 hour thing at least i'm hoping to god it's not anything like that but it's i'm still enjoying it nonetheless uh, regardless trying to unravel this mystery slowly but surely it appears what we found out thus far is everyone seems to be involved with this cairo situation or heading through istanbul or getting off at venice no sorry going to venice and then going to Cairo um, in Egypt uh, majority of these people uh, they've all got a stake in this situation it appears the violinist uh, the woman writer uh, I, I think the doctor I don't know what he said uh, as well uh, I, I, I can't remember what he said but I know the constable obviously is uh, or the lead detective is taking the thing in a cash box through there so it's all interesting stuff at this point all connected somehow um, the Baroness, we haven't found out a lot about her just yet, but she's probably involved in it as well somehow, you know what I mean? Um, going to an exhibition over there, God knows. Um, but yeah, uh, guys, I'm going to check the timing of this video. Guys, we're one hour in exactly. I'm happy to leave it here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Links will be in the description below, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching.